A very warm welcome to Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program with me, Ishi Gelsen. Our top stories this week. Financial institutions to provide only 30% of the vehicle cost as vehicle loan. World Rangers Day observed to recognize and pay tribute to forest rangers in the country. And use of hope tore, the traditional way of dining to be taught to the students in Tashiyangsi. People will now get only 30% of the total cost of a vehicle as vehicle loan. The central bank issued the directives on the revised motor vehicle loan to all financial institutions for strict compliance recently. The vehicle loan will be 30% of the value of vehicle irrespective of the type of vehicles and it applies to all vehicle loans processed from 1st of August. The governor of the Royal Monetary Authority, Dasho Penjor, said Considering the huge surge of vehicle imports in the recent years, over 4,000 vehicles imported in the last 12 months, costing the country over 2 billion rupees, there is a need to tighten the access to credit for purchase of personal vehicles. Therefore, RMA changed its micro-potential norm on loan-to-value or LTV to 30% from 50%. The governor also added that the recent application of goods and services tax or GST in India might increase the import of vehicles. The governor said due to application of GST in India, import of cars to Bhutan is exempted from GST, meaning car cost would be lower which may increase car imports to Bhutan, further worsening INR trade deficit and reserves. This will also increase the traffic congestion in the limited space in the country. So considering these impacts, there is a call for both monetary and fiscal measures to contain the import of cars. Additional fiscal measures to our monetary measures may come soon considering the macroeconomic risk. However, the measures may change if the conditions change. Till now, if the price of the vehicle is more than 800,000 newton, the loan amount is 50% of the vehicle's cost. And it is 60% if the vehicle costs less than 800,000 newton. The Royal Monetary Authority's Board of Directors approved the revised motor vehicle loan during its 137 board meeting. This is PASA, BBS News. Even after months of investigation, awareness and movement control, the foot and mouth disease or FMD outbreak in Paro is still not contained. Officials are monitoring a possible spread of FMD in other geogs with increase in the number of cattle infected in seven geogs. The foot and mouth disease has infected almost 500 animals in seven geogs since the outbreak in June this year. Teams are already in strategic areas to avoid the disease from spreading, which otherwise becomes difficult to control. We are getting uh, many new cases from the affected villages only, which is not alarming to us, because it is, it is very common as per our investigation report that all affected villages are having, sharing a very close geographical settings and they have uh, all common risk factors, uh, risk factors together. So the current new case is not alarming to us and further we are uh, doing our best to contain the disease to keep within these uh, seven geogs only. Tourists and locals use this gate to get to highlands of Su, Naro and Linji. Bhutan Agriculture and Food Regulatory Authority officials are deployed at Kunitsawa checkpost to regulate the movement of people and animals. But it is challenging. The awareness program, uh, we educated all the farmers on the risk factors for FMD spread to one village to another. And most of the farmers are not cooperating, especially during summer season, most of the animals are released freely in forest. And, uh, most of the animals they share are very uh, common grazing land. Sento gyona zumchi be watching jersey din nam samichira mila kara yuhagi hemagi te no jasada jasam. Farmers of Sento Gyok mostly own local breed and not jersey. So it is difficult for farmers to rear them by keeping at home. They graze everywhere in the forest. So it is difficult for us to keep them at home. However, we ask the local leaders to inform people to keep the animals at home. There is a new problem. Farmers are disposing carcasses into the river. Officials said 
24 cattle died as of yesterday and about four carcasses were found in Pachu near Tsendona and Shaba. As far as the report, uh, we get so many complaints about the dead carcass in the Pachu, Pachu River, which is spotted down there in the lower valleys of La Paro, like Shaba and Isuna. And this has a many, uh, many negative uh, implications for further disease outbreak, like uh, the Pachu rivers go down towards the valley, and the many uh, uh, free grazing animals are down there in Isuna and Shaba, and it may directly come contact to uh, the drinking water of the river. The carcass must be buried two meters under the ground. The disease is expected to be brought under control in three weeks' time. For Sangi Chenzom in Paro, Pasung Doji, BBS News. Rearing sheep is declining in Meragyeok of Trashigang. People there are losing interest in such a practice because it is laborious and also because they do not have abundant pasture for the animal to graze. Each household in Merak owns only a handful of sheep meant just for production of wool. As compared to rearing yaks, sheep farming, locals say, is more tiring. Also, some of them said there are risks of losing the animal to the Tibetan mastiffs in the area people keep as guard dogs. <laughs> We need two people to look after the yaks and then another two for the sheep. It is not convenient to rear the two animals together. Moreover, rearing yak is more profitable as we get milk and butter. We can also use its hair for weaving clothes and bags. For sheep, it is just the wool. The Mera Gup said earlier people used to rear and breed sheep in flocks because there were enough pastures and in winter the locals used to migrate to lower altitude places with the sheep. The shungi looks over the Mr. Disugi, Tamro Disu Shungi, Chodosum in Bevola, Shungi Wandosum. In the past, we used to have pasture in different places, but today the government has reformed the practice, so it has become inconvenient for us to rear sheep. They have divided the land accordingly, so today for our sheep we have pastures in culling only. The Zonkak Livestock Office also agreed on the number of sheep decreasing in Mirak over the years. The office, however, has plans to revive the farming practice. Recently, during the visit of the Prime Minister, the people of the Gewok also received 60 sheep. For Sering Zam, this is Sunam Pem for BBS News. The Department of Forests and Park Services celebrated the first ever World Rangers Day in the capital on 31st July. The day is marked worldwide to recognize the roles played by the forest rangers in conserving the natural heritage. Amongst many rangers from different regions, 65 years old Pasang Sering, a retired ranger, was recognized for his 38 years of dedicated service to the department. He was delighted to receive the award from the Prime Minister. I feel very proud of myself today and I'm extremely happy as well. Receiving such recognition makes me feel very fortunate. Getting an opportunity to take photo with the Prime Minister makes me even happier. I have not much to say, but I'm overjoyed and I feel it is the best moment of my life. The Prime Minister Dasu Tsring Topke highlighted the important roles played by the forest rangers in protecting the country's natural heritage. Forest rangers are not only helpful to us, but they are also helpful to the nation as well. 
They are the ones who protect us when the illegal poachers enter into the country through broader areas and while taking care of the nation's security. Some of the rangers have even lost their lives. Therefore, it is very important to be grateful to them for the sacrifices they made while protecting the country's natural heritage. Along with the recognition, tributes were paid to those rangers who sacrificed their lives in the line of duty. The Department of Forests and Parks Services also launched its membership to the International Rangers Federation, a non-profit organization. International Rangers Federation will help rangers from around the world to share their successes and failures in protecting the world's heritage. Later, exhibition stalls were opened to showcase the diverse roles played by the department in preserving the country's natural resources. It will be open for the next two days in the Centenary Park in Changlimitong. Basang Doji, PBS News. Graduates from colleges affiliated to Sikkim Manipal University in India are worried once again as the government will not be able to help them. It means they cannot sit for the Bhutan Civil Service examination and the elections since their mode of education is considered as distance learning. The university started reflecting its mode of education as distance education on certificates only from 2016. Graduates from colleges affiliated to Sikkim Manipal University will not be considered possessing formal university degree. Following an appeal to the cabinet in April, the government assured that they will talk with relevant agencies to consider their degree certificates. However, recently, the government made it clear it is not in a position to help them. What we feel is we have some hope with the government. We feel that our government and the Ministry of Education will come up with a decision that will be historic in the history of our country, which will validate our certificate from distance to regular so that we can participate in election, uh, RCACs and other uh, institutions and also uh, when you opt for further studies. That uh team team legion the Jungi the ministries of education they are also aware of the universities taking part in the fair and if the ministries of education itself is not aware of the uh, universities being recognized one they should uh, they could have uh, restricted the participation of universities in the field department of adult and higher education which is the body to ensure quality higher education said they are just going by the rule it's very important for us to get back to the university uh, for these two things uh, genuineness uh, legitimacy and uh, secondly it's the uh, uh, whether that's the regular or uh, it's distance. So it's two things, mode and the genuineness. So we, for this two things, if we write to them and if they confirm to us that it is distance, there is no way that we can put it as regular because ours is very straightforward. There are thousands of Bhutanese who graduated from Sikkim Manipal University affiliated colleges and they continue to remain hopeful. Poop Game for BBS News. The Samsi College of Education has introduced postgraduate degree courses in science and mathematics. The first of its kind in the country, 40 teachers have enrolled for the two-year course. It took about a decade for the college to come up with the master's degree courses. 
In 2007, the college carried out a survey among its graduates to find out the challenges they face in schools. The findings showed that there is a need for teachers to improve their content knowledge and pedagogical competences. Also, there is a need for teachers to do some research on classroom teaching and learning. Based on such results, the courses have been developed. We believe that uh, the quality of science and mathematics education is key to uh, national development and uh, the quality of science and mathematics teaching therefore is really important for the education system particularly in our school system. So far as the learning experiences uh, are concerned we would like to believe that there's a lot of research, critical thinking analysis and investigative uh, work that students will be engaged in and all of the faculty members will make sure that the, the relevance and the rigor of the program is ensured at every moment of the postgraduate journey. Uh, we looked at uh, the uh, classes uh, 10 and 12 uh, uh, board examination uh, results and uh, we, we, we came to know that the students are not performing uh, well uh, in, uh, in science and uh, mathematics and uh, that uh, uh, made us to uh, work on uh, the master's program for the teachers uh, so that uh, they become uh, competent in content knowledge, in uh, teaching methods. The education ministry selected the 40 students based on merit. Very excited to be uh, part of this uh, historic moment because this is the first ever MED program being offered by Santi College of Education. Now, uh, it's very interesting and very uh, um, relevant for us because the MED program being offered by Santi College of Education is quite unique from the MED program offered in other countries. This is because since the needs of our students are quite different, and the scenario of our country's educational system is quite different. The MED program is organized in such a way that it suits to those, uh, cater to those uh, needs. And uh, I'm very lucky to be part of this historic movement. The Education Ministry also floated 12 more slots for self-financing students. However, there were no applicants. The two-year course costs a little over 250,000 newton. For Tamchizam in Samsi, Sherub Dorji, BBS News. Students in Trashyangsi will be taught and encouraged to use pop tore, the traditional way of dining in schools, to revive the tradition. Teachers learn the dining manners during the Yangtze Shuri Convention. Over 300 teachers sat down on the floor of a dining hall, holding a pop and tori each. <laughs> then a demonstration was conducted on how to fold and unfold the tori and hold the pop. Some teachers then served the dinner. The teachers carefully learned the Bhutanese dining etiquette as most of them are handling popdori for the first time. Back in schools and homes, everyone now uses imported kitchen utensils and the use of modern dining set is slowly eroding the traditional dining custom. The use of pop and tori in the school is expected to revive the traditional way of dining, which was commonly practiced during our forefathers' time. Did you think uh, this as part of uh, uh, the Yang Tse Shirik Convention is mainly to open up our people that uh, there is a traditional way of uh, dining together and uh, we are doing it uh, using pop the tora. So that's why uh, we want all 301 teachers to actually get this opportunity to dine once. Uh, and uh, we expect that uh, when they go back to their schools, uh, they would also in a similar manner organize this kind of uh, dining with the traditional way. Slowly, with the arrival of the uh, modern amenities like uh, plates, cups, like those spoons and others, people find it easier to use those uh, amenities rather than using Pop and Tora. So therefore we see 
that this culture is slowly uh, declining in the communities, like in our communities. Therefore, we feel it important that we at least teach our children uh, on our traditional way of uh, dining. School is considered as the second home. So with modern facilities and development, children do not eat with their family. The culture of dining with Pope and Tore is vanishing. Though we have a large number of students, as a teacher, I'll at least teach them once a year to use it. The school where I teach is small as it is primary school. We have limited number of students with just 78 and students get the chance to eat only lunch in the school. Until now, they bring their packed lunch in imported lunch boxes. So we will take out time and teach them at least in a month. Even if they cannot afford it, we the teachers will contribute and let them enjoy their meal in Pope and Tore. The teachers during the four-day convention also discussed issues related to teaching pedagogy and shared problems and challenges they face while in schools. For Tsurunzam in Tashiansi, Samtun Dolgar, BBS News. Not many women are seen visiting the Youth Development Fund's drop-in centre in Timpu. This, according to those working at the centre, is mainly due to social stigma and people's misconception of the centre's purpose. In June this year, of the 27 individuals who visited this centre, only nine were women. Uh, as compared to men, female are less uh, available services, available our services uh, because like, uh, women are more stigmatised and due to like, poor social support. And one thing is that uh, women are not so like dependent. She added, although the center a few years ago was only meant for drug-dependent individuals, today it provides an array of youth-related services. I think we should uh, provide or conduct like awareness program in the community and educate them. Uh, Tempo, like uh, people think like a drop-in center is a place only for like uh, SUD, like substance use disorder. But uh, actually, like we like provide services to everyone. It's not only the place for like substance use disorder. Everyone can mm. come in and avail our services. Some come here for information on various youth-related issues so that they can share them with their families. I also come here although I'm not a drug dependent. We get information on the harmful effects of drugs and alcohol. Until last year, there used to be a regular meeting among women, but it stopped due to lack of women participants. Last year since the meeting, there was the boom this amount the meeting stopped. Things are no different at the YDF drop-in center in Bumtang and so are the reasons. This year, so far, the center received 76 clients, of it 19 were women. For now, the consolation is that such centers across the country, through its various outreach programs and initiatives, have started to gain the confidence and support of parents, teachers and social workers. And those working at the center feel that it is only a matter of time before they are able to do the same to the rest of the society. Srindandu, BBS News. Despite exceeding its capacity 15 years ago, the Memelaka landfill site in Timpu is still in use today. Every day, around 18 truckloads containing about 51 metric tons of both wet and dry waste is dumped at the landfill site. This, according to Timpu Tromde, is due to lack of proper area to construct a new one. It was in the year 1994 when Memelaka landfill was constructed to dump waste for eight years. But even after 15 years, the landfill is still in use. The landfill is under more pressure after the Sabitang landfill was closed last year. All types of waste collected from all parts of Tempu are now dumped at Memelaka. <laughs> If there is landslide, it may pose high risk to the highway which is right below the landfill. Moreover, in the future, if there are more liquids coming from the waste, it may contaminate the underground water. He says there are no other available places nearby to construct a new landfill. In other areas, there are settlements. Moreover, we have rivers and streams. 
which is why we could not construct the landfill. To minimize the problem at the Mimilaka landfill site, the Tomd expanded the area and constructed tanks to collect leachate to prevent it from contaminating the underground water. And the green road is using plastics from the landfill site to build roads. A survey is currently underway to further expand the landfill site. Meanwhile, a material recovery facility is under construction at Ngabironchu, which will further segregate the dry waste from plastics and pet bottles to be recycled later. Something Dolker, PBS News. That's all we have for this week. Until next time, this is Ishkielsen saying goodbye.